Welcome to another overclocking and undervolting video. Today we will mess with the Ryzen 5 5600X, which has sold thousands of units, and many many users have one in their gaming PC. It is relatively cheap and performs amazing even with high-end graphics cards. I will show you today all possible ways how to overclock this CPU in order to get better performance depending on your needs as well as how you can undervolt it in order to reduce power draw and temperatures, if that is what you are looking for. Before we begin, we will run some benchmarks at stock TDP and settings to check the performance. We will be using an air cooler in order to cover the most of you, and in order to have a fair comparison between all overclocks, we will set the CPU fan speed at 100%. In Cinebench we got 10,178 in multi-core and 1,531 in single-core. CPU Z benchmark gave us 17,289 in multi-core and 3,099 in single-core performance. The last test is a custom 3D Mark Gaming benchmark for CPU performance, where we got 7,930 points. And we also noticed how the clocks fluctuate in order to keep the rated TDP. Now let's start by enabling PBO and unlocking the TDP by going into BIOS and setting limits to motherboard. In Cinebench we got this time 11,295 in multi-core and 1,515 in single core. CPU Z benchmark gave us 18,121 in multi-core and 3,082 in single core performance. In 3D Mark, we got this time 8,262 points and the clocks were more stable than before. Now, let's boot into BIOS again and enable Auto OC as well. We go again into Overclocking Settings and set Boost Clock Override to positive 200 MHz. Running the benchmarks again, we got 11,245 in multi-core and 1,551 in single-core. CPU Z benchmark gave us 18,036 in multi-core and 3192 in single core performance. In 3D Mark, we got 8296 points. Worth mentioning here is that although we got slightly lower multi-thread scores, we had better single core performance achieving over 4.7 GHz. That is due to limited cooling using an air cooler. If you're running a better CPU cooler, you will get higher clocks and performance in both scenarios. The AMD PBO Auto OC algorithm does a better job if the CPU runs cool enough. We will continue with manual overclocking, and after that with the undervolting. For that, we disable all the PBO and Auto OC settings, set the multiplier to 46, and adjust the V-Core voltage to 1.4 volts, which is the baseline. As a rule of thumb, an all-core manual overclock will be somewhere near the single-core boost clock, depending on the CPU. From here, you can work your way up, increasing first the multiplier and then the core by a bit each time and running the benchmarks all over again. For this particular processor and CPU cooler, that was as far as we could go without crashing. If you have better cooling or a silicon lottery CPU, you could get higher clocks and lower voltage. Running the benchmarks with an all-core 4.6 GHz, we got 11,871 in multi-core and 1,519 in single-core. CPU Z benchmark gave us 18,563 in multi core and 3079 in single core performance. In 3D Mark, we got 8444 points, which is the highest so far because, as we also see here, we had a stable speed at all times. One last method we will use is combining PBO with undervolting using Curve Optimizer and setting the V core manually. For that, we start with Curve Optimizer in order to find how low can it go. We found that minus 10 was as far as we could go. Then, we start with 1.34 volts on the V-Core, and we need basically to reduce the V-Core voltage by a little, and run the benchmarks again and again until we find where the system performs according to our needs. So here the best performing voltage was 1.34 volts, and we could go as low as 1.268 volts having the following results. So if you need lower temperatures in exchange for performance, you could go lower, and if you want more performance, you could go higher. In this screen, you can see all the results compared to each other. You could use any of those methods depending on your hardware and the results you want to achieve. Better multi-core performance or single-core performance. Better temperatures and power draw. It basically gives us a better understanding and the impact of using each of these methods. 
one last option if you are running a decent cooler is to use PBO and Auto OC with custom voltage and curve optimizer. In fact, it managed to push the 5600G to over 4.6 GHz all core, which you can see in our 5600G overclocking video. That was it guys. Thank you for watching the video till the end. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I would also like to hear your results. Make sure to like and share the video, and don't forget to subscribe. See you on the next one.